Hey everyone, so this is the second video in a series of devlogs where I'm documenting developing a game for Apple platforms using C++ and Metal. So in the previous video I gave an introduction to the project and showed off the, the engine slash game portion. But in this video I wanted to show the editor side of things. Now for context, most games you know, at least 3D games, since dating all the way back to some of the first, such as Doom or Quake, Unreal, you know, the namesake of Unreal Engine, they all had some form of tool to help them develop the game, whether that be to create levels or, you know, design or script the game. Um, so my game will be no exception. Uh, we're, I'm, I'm going to be developing an editor to go alongside, which will help me design uh, or at least create the levels uh, and place, you know, objects, etc. Um, and then maybe even handle some some scripting related things, uh, and maybe even some some shader or resource editing. Uh, very minimal. I'm not trying to like make Blender or something like that. Uh, no, I'm just trying to make a tool uh, that can uh, minimally help me create what I need. Right for the game. So a little bit about the editor. Uh, it's being developed in, you know, using Qt, so still C++. Uh, I have a lot of experience with Qt, so I've chose that uh, over uh, some other form of uh, UI toolkit. Qt is just uh, the easiest for me to get up and running using. Um, I, I think at this point I have almost 10 years experience from previous companies I've worked at uh, using Qt, so uh, yeah, I have quite a quite the background with Qt. Um, so here, uh, here's I'll show off the editor project. Um, so we have the the main window here, um, and so I'll I'll just run it. Um, but one thing to note, you know, because it's also C plus plus, I'm able to leverage the same engine code directly in the editor as well. Uh, that's you know one benefit of what I'm doing here is, uh, you know, I can reuse stuff. Um, I've thought in the past about, you know, what if I try and develop, you know, natively for Mac OS using like AppKit or something like that. But there's a lot of difficulty in that. I'd have to use Objective-C++, et cetera. It's, it's, and I'm also not familiar with it. So it would be a, a, quite a bit, big learning uh, curve for that. So I'd rather just stick with what I already know, which is Qt. So let me start by showing what I have so far. It's very basic at the moment. What I've been focused on is getting, you know, a, a solid way to render using Metal uh, up and running with Qt. So if I run the project here, um, you'll see here I have on the left is a, just a basic tree view. It's empty. Um, it'll eventually maybe be populated with some of the scene, op the level objects, etc. Um, but on the right here in this tab, it, that is the, the level or the, you know, the engine level being displayed using a, a custom metal widget. So Qt by default doesn't necessarily have a out of the box uh, way to render using metal directly into a Q widget. Um, they do support, you know, Vulkan and OpenGL because the, they're, they're trying to be cross platform. So their focus is more on cross platform solutions. Um, but thankfully, Apple's APIs are quite powerful and simple, so you're able to to pretty easily make a, uh, a native widget here. Um, so I'll, I'll show that off uh, in a bit. Um, but first, I want to talk about one of the, the uh, new things that I did here that has slightly changed the way I've, uh, I've developed now. Uh, and in the previous devlog, I mentioned that I had been developing the engine and game sort of 50-50 in Xcode versus C-Lion, um, primarily Xcode for being able to capture a metal frame capture uh, running through Xcode. Now, I know you can technically do an attached to process to be able to, to not have to actually run your entire project through Xcode, but that workflow is also not ideal. Um, but what I've been able to do here is programmatically trigger frame captures using the uh, the Metal Capture Manager API. Um, so that allows me to run this this Qt app uh, wholly through C Lion. So my development is entirely in C Lion using CMake. Um, and then for any of these widgets, you can 
tell them to do a uh, a frame capture, trigger a frame capture for their callback operation, the display link callback. Um, which yeah, I should mention that the 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 custom widget that I've developed here, it, it's effectively a key widget with a replaced metal layer with a display link callback, a metal display link callback to allow me to to render um, hooked up to the, the the refresh rate. So if you go up here, I can show that there's a little metal frame capture, and when you click this, um, what it'll do is it'll dump a frame capture for that that widget there uh, and I can just click replay and open it. It, it automatically opens an Xcode. Um, so there we go. That's very convenient for me as I'm developing uh, in the editor and uh, adding more rendering code. I'll be able to just dump a frame capture whenever I want there and open it up just to see what is happening with that frame. So Yeah, let me show you the code now. Um, so let's go over to the metal widget, because uh, I think this is probably the most interesting thing here right now. Um, so as I said, this is just a, a basic Q widget that you know inherits the metal display link delegate so that I can get the, the callback called for when uh, the display queries a, a render, right? Um, or a refresh. Uh, and so here in the, the constructor, that's where I set up until Qt we're a native widget, so don't do any rendering or paint engine shenanigans. Um, just let me handle everything. Um, and then I set, I create a, a, a metal layer, set it on the basically vanilla NS view at this point. Uh, and then I set up a display link and add it to the, the main run loop. Um, yeah. And so I'll show you the, the frame capture code as well. Um, so here, uh, if we were told, this widget was told to do a frame capture, it will uh, wrap its draw call, uh, which it has a delegate, which it, it you know asks to do a draw, um, and it'll wrap that. And then once it's done, it'll do a uh, open on the, the, the dumped frame capture. Now the delegate is basically a way to assign draw code or basically draw logic to a widget so the widget doesn't own the draw logic it it has a delegate that it calls to so in, in my case here we i just created a basic like scene render level render um that that just all it does really is um handles the the metal updating of the level and then down here it just calls whatever the active level on it is uh, which is just a an object from the, the game engine itself. Um, I'll eventually probably have custom renderers here for the editor that are separate, uh, ones that'll probably be for rendering uh, or viewing resources, whether it be you know models and animations and et cetera. So not, not always just drawing the level itself because updating and drawing the level involves effectively running the game inside the editor, which is interesting and that will probably There'll be use cases for that, such as you know being able to just click play or something and run and run a simulation of the the same game logic within the editor. Um, but for now, I'm I'm more focused on design rather than and you know creation of the the game assets rather than running the the level inside of it. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much all that I have to show right now. Um, let me know in the comments uh, if you find this interesting. If you want a, if you like the sort of free freeform videos I'm doing here, they're not edited at all. It's just me, you know, telling you what I've been working on and showing you. Um, I know a lot of game devlogs uh, are heavily edited and they show more than just uh, the actual development of the project. Um, but uh, historically, I've I've never been one to do that. I've been mainly just straight. Uh, code and explaining uh the code so yeah just let me know so yeah like comment subscribe and i'll see you in the next video thank you